Hey, 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 hypotheticals, gays, gamers, and comrades. Today's video is a wee bit different than usual, but I must simply attest to the fact that it seems to have hit a roadblock, listeners. It appears that nothing really motivates me creatively anymore, because <laughs> you finish one chicken based animation and suddenly there's a hole in your soul. So, new format! With my voice, what do you know? Will this be creatively fulfilling? Who knows, sometimes the only thing to do is dig yourself out of the hole, brush the lichen and moss of your face and broadcast the process of doodling four characters from a popular web series to the vast abyss of the interwebs, an unending, undying stream of content and fed via merciless algorithm that it becomes the very undoing of many. So let's begin! What isn't there to say about the long-awaited web series turned internet sensation turned streamable program? Every single frame is bursting with life and energy, tied together with a surprisingly star-studded cast and holy shit so many people from literally Broadway. It's an 80 episode smorgasbord of bops, bangers even, and a gripping story. The only criticisms would be its sliding fast pacing, the story really could have benefited from some room to brief, or space for the characters to interact outside the main story bits, and some of color jokes mainly, but other than that I think it's a pretty great show. So I wanted to try my hand at redesigning some of the main characters, mainly for fun and to draw them in my style while discussing them. Obligatory, I actually quite like the majority of the designs. This is not me fixing or, any, or anything of the sorts. I'm just playing around with these characters, you know? Since she's the driving force of the story, Charlie seems like a good place to start. So, Charlie Morningstar, Princess of Hell. Motivated with the seemingly impossible task of getting a bunch of sinners to even start believing in redemption. Overall, she has a very strong design. Her color palette, red, white, and gold, does a very good job at conveying her vehicle background and playing into the circus archetypes that show seems to assign to each of Hell's sovereigns. Sad with Lucifer being the ringmaster, Ozzy being a magician, Mammon being a clown, and so forth and so forth. Ironically enough, despite being born in Hell and never having been a human, Charlie has one of the most human-like designs, while the rest of the cast have an animal motif. So he decided to give her the goat ears and, well, not pictured hooves. And that is the animal most stereotypically associated with Lucifer. I thought it would fit in nicely. As well, I added a few apples in the details, like the bow and horn adornments, trying to keep her optimistic demeanor. Side note, but practically being a Disney princess archetype, Charlotte is a character that could have very easily fallen into a toxic optimism or that being her only trait. But over the course of the series, she's allowed to get angry at various characters <coughs> Susan, and gets rightfully irate over injustices. As well, I gave her a French bracelet because she just seems like a French bracelet kind of gal to me, I don't know. Circling back to the circus theme, I decided to give her the mouth hinges of a ventriloquist dummy, or one of those old porcelain dolls one would see in antique shops or basements. Something something about a resemblance of humanity, the one thing she fights for but never actually was. Going next to the winner of the most ironic theme, and everyone's favorite slutty spider with a featured polka, but would, would spider slut count as a name for a spider slut? It's, it's spider and a suffix, right? I, whatever, digital footprint, digital footprint. Ah well. No presenting Angel Dust. I consider Angel Dust to have a really strong character design, having a clear silhouette and a pleasant color palette. However, little dots that are actually eyes aside, his design doesn't really give much of spider, so I decided to shuffle his head shape a bit for there to be a slightly more of a resemblance. As well, I decided to keep his relatively simple pink and white palette and instead swap around his outfit with a skirt and a mesh shirt for casual lounge wear, as well as have these pink lace gloves. As a hotel's first technically they're just a crashing resident, I find Angel to be quite the complex characters, ma mainly working in grace. Third on, the, third on the redesigned chopping block would be Vagi. Now, Vagi, and at first I couldn't believe that to be her actual name, but then you remember that the name Dick is a diminutive of the name Richard and nobody but Sanai, as a character is a protector archetype, and Charlie's love interest. And to be completely honest, I didn't really find the relationship all that interesting until the last few episodes, like, they were cute and all, but the substance was just lacking. 
I wish Vagi could just break a bit from the whole supportive partner role. The whole conflict with being a fallen angel is great, it's really interesting and really puts to test Charlie's belief in redemption. However, when the moment came, she didn't have to make the decision in standing up to Adam or sabotaging the plan. And in a case where they redesigned and firstly took out all the red in her design, like, I get it, they're in hell and all, and I'm the last person to talk about eyes hearing eye colors, like, my two mindsets when coloring are grayscale and oof, ouch, my eyes. However, with how oversaturated it is in the show, it can make details get lost in the background. Okay, Charlie was an exception because she's the main character, but I decided to give all the main redesigns a main color that differed from red. I kept the hair but made the top part of her hair face resemble this really neat moth mask that I think it sells pretty well the uncanniness and if the reality of a fallen angel, while making her X over her eye into a scar to keep her combative and fighting sight. For her outfit, I turned to a mint green flowy type of blouse, this purple and green are complementary colors, and I think a more practical everyday outfit seems like the type of thing she would wear. The final one on this round would be Alistair, so this might come up as a bit of a revelation, but they are actually one of my favorite animals. They perfectly walk the tightrope between graceful and beautiful and eldritch and horrible. I love them so much, weird little freaks. So hearing that Alice were inspired by deer, it's free real estate, basically. According to the Haspin wiki, he died after a hunter mistook him from a deer and shot him. Which, now thinking about it, it's pretty horrible to be eternally locked in one of your worst moments physically. Circling back, it's pretty neat how his original design is so reminiscent of high school deviant Ardosis. Granted, he is one, but you know. In any case, for the redesign, I wanted to both reflect the fact that he is from the 1930s taking inspiration from old-timey radio hosts and this almost Hannibal Lecter figure, with the refined suits and slick hairstyles. In the end, I decided to keep the deer features to a minimum, I sketched up a couple of ideas for a more deer-like design, but it sucked, I'm not showing it here. I then decided on a more monochrome palette to restrict the red Armageddon the show seems so insistent on showcasing with some gold accents from the antlers. Then, couldn't forget about his microphone cane thing, so I doodled a couple of ideas, then settled on this design and a green and black color palette. So, drum roll please, this would be the final designs. Overall, I'm pretty happy with them, fun exercise and all. So, that would be all. Cool. Thank you. Bye.